In this video, we're going to take a look at a more complicated and general version of if else. We're going to look at if else if, you could call it. So again, as with many of the constructs that we're going to be studying, in fact, almost all of them, or certainly many of them, there are equivalents to what we're about to see in other programming languages. So yes, at the moment you're learning the syntax of Python, but you are also learning general programming principles, which you could apply in other languages if you wanted to learn other languages as well. Although plenty of people know one programming language and you might easily work for your entire life on writing software in one programming language if that is what you want to do. Okay, so at the top here, let's create some more constants. Actually, I'm gonna rename this. Let's have this change to worker one. We can imagine we've got some workers in some kind of facility. Let's say it's a factory or a research laboratory or something. We'll have another worker here and let's call this second worker, Rachel, and we'll have someone else. This can be the supervisor. Let's, let's write professor and uh, he can be called Falcon. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start off by checking to see if the name entered is John. So that's worker one. Now, if the name entered isn't John, we want to check, well, is it Rachel or is it Falcon? So what I'm gonna do is put another clause in here above the else. So we need to delete that indent, go right flush to the left-hand margin. And I'm gonna type elif, and we're gonna have another condition, name equals equals worker, two and then we'll have a customized greeting let's suppose rachel prefers to be addressed in italian we'll say ciao rachel and here let's just say hello john and maybe i'll get rid of the second line so what is this elif this is short for else if so we're saying if name is worker one you know, whatever that is, happens to be John. We're gonna print, hello, John. Else, so if that's not true, else if the name is worker two, which is Rachel, we're gonna print, ciao, Rachel. Else, we're gonna print something down here. Let's print name not recognized. We want one more clause here. So I'm gonna to go to the next line again above else, delete the indent with backspace and we'll have elif name equals equals professor colon then print greetings professor falcon. So let's see what this program does. I'm going to run it. So it says enter your name. If I enter John, it's gonna say, hello, John. Run it again. If I enter Rachel, it's gonna say, ciao, Rachel. If I enter Falcon, it's gonna say, greetings, greetings, Professor Falcon. Let's put an S in there. If I enter something else, it's gonna say, name not recognized. Let's get rid of this program finished as well, because I just put that in to show you that you can have things after the if else that are not part of the if else. So this is a mechanism for selectively executing one of multiple possible code blocks depending on a condition. It's important to realize that only one of these code blocks will ever be executed, either this one or this one or this one or that one. Now the Python interpreter will read this from the top to the bottom. The Python interpreter, the Python program, always reads your code from the top to the bottom. So it's going to check through these different clauses and it's going to say, is this true? If it is, it's going to print, hello John. And in that case, it's then finished and it will go on to whatever code is found after the if statement, if there is any. If this is not true, it will check the second condition here. 
if that's true, it will print char Rachel, and then it will go on to any code that's after the if statement here. If this isn't true, it will check the next condition down. If that's true, it prints this and then goes on to whatever is after the if block. If this isn't true, then it's going to execute this else clause. So you're always going to have one of these different code blocks executing. It's just a question of which one. Now, in each case, you can have multiple lines in each code block. I've only got one line in each one, but each one can consist of multiple lines as long as all the lines are correctly indented. And all the bits of this are optional, apart from the first if. So you could have an if by itself, you could have an if elif, or you could have all this bit by itself without the else. You could also just have if else, as we've already seen. So try this out for yourself. Type this out, get it working, and experiment with it. Try adding more lines into one or all of the code blocks. You could add another worker in here and have another condition. You could try it without the else. Experiment with it a little bit. We're going to be using this later on. Now, as I say, all programming languages pretty much have some equivalent to this. They don't all have the same keywords, like often you have to write out else if. And since I do use several different programming languages, you don't have to, but I, I happen to do so. I do get confused a little bit sometimes, but generally I find that once you settle into programming with a particular language, then confusion tends not to arise. It's really not a big problem. And in fact, when you learn these constructs in one programming language, it is much easier to learn another programming language if, if you want to do that for some reason. Don't forget, you've got to have these colons in the right place, and you've got to get the indentation exactly right as well for this to work. Hello, you've been watching a free sample from my Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and Machine Learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.